well, this is one of the quietest nature, natureful. I, I made a new word, natureful areas around here that within like 10 miles. You could fall through there. I right? think I can hear some people. I've already seen one cyclist go through. Yes, it's a group of female runners. Um, yeah, you're not really supposed to go up this part. Look, all that area there, there's a lot of lakes and small wooded areas like this. Um, this goes on for about a kilometre up this grassy it's like an old railway or something, isn't it? Very difficult to escape from people, human activity in the UK. Maybe that's her parents. But um, a couple of years ago, on my mountain bike, I rode all the way down there. Um, used to be able to get through. Used to be able to get in here at the other end. Um, then when the the HS2 railway construction started, you could no longer get through there. So you have to come in this way. And that building site you see there is the HS2 railway, high speed rail. So yeah, I mean if the government if the government doesn't respect the sanctity of this well, they've stopped there, look. They've stopped. If the government doesn't respect the sanctity of this you know, nature, reserve, whatever it is. Why should I, you know? Why should anyone else? But, um, I suspect the, uh, I suspect the railway will do much more damage than I can. But yeah, you can see right through that. Um, you could fall through this. Um, yeah, you wonder why why all of this chaos and upheaval of society? Simply no explanation for. There's no like meaning, meaning of life. You know, there's no meaning that you can actually discern while you're while you're alive. There's no. There's nothing to figure out. Otherwise, I mean, put it this way, how many people have lived? How many of them actually figured it out? <laughs> if they did figure it out, then either they couldn't share it, or, you know, they shared it and then the information disappeared, or it was hidden on purpose. Or um, they did share it and nobody recognised it as the truth. But um, one possible interpretation is that you, this universe experience is designed so that you can't figure out what it's about until you die. Let's assume that it happens when you die and then during that time when you're alive, you're basically shown a bunch of different scenarios and um, like clues and stories and things that will give you a diff an evolving perspective but um, it's all kind of like stage show and it's meant to kind of lead you down one belief path and then another and then another but you'll never actually find anything that's like true because 
it's just being constructed to give you a, a sort of false lead, a false, yeah, false picture of what the hidden truth is. Um, so that's one possibility that we'll never figure it, figure it out uh, because it's constructed in such a way that you can't. Um, I think a lot of people would find that um, that kind of viewpoint to be quite. They would get quite irritated. It it wouldn't sit well with them. And I can totally understand that. It goes against our natural kind of inclination, our natural feeling. But um, that's not the point. That's not the topic for today. The topic for today is this manifestation technique. And um, this is a, one that I like. It's an interesting one. And I started doing it, I think it was mid to late last year, sort of late summer, autumn. That's the first time I played around with it. And um, I just thought I'd talk about how I performed it and how it kind of feels and what happens. Um, so I... I'd probably heard about it before, but I I watched Howdy Mikowski's video about how to do it, and from that I kind of got enough information to to have a attempt at doing it, and for me it it did kind of succeed. I can see another cyclist here actually. This one's wearing I think it's a different guy. He's wearing a fluorescent thing. Which, yeah, for me, it did actually succeed. Um, but it might not be what you really expect. Like, when people think about manifesting something, they're, they're thinking, like, that they're going to achieve some sort of great success in life or come into some fortune or get some massive advantage over other people and I think it's unlikely it's unlikely to do that um, at least in my case that's what not what that wasn't what it did so how do you talks about in his video he talks about basically inserting this your thought your suggestion or this sort of and and this energy into what he says is like a gap a gap between thoughts a gap between between different thoughts and um i um i kind of see it as like this you firstly you've got to get into like this state of mind this uh, this won't always work because your state of mind will vary between over time and stuff. This is what he says as well. It didn't always work for him. You firstly you've got to be on the right sort of frequency. So you've got to kind of reach the right point in your perspective. You have to be kind of um let's say awakened. Um, and then you've got to be in the right kind of mood. Uh, there was an animal there. I don't know what it was. It's an interesting animal. Didn't look like a rabbit. Too small to be a deer. Could have been a fox. Um, but... Um, You need to reach this kind of state, uh, um, and this this place that you're kind of you're going to put your suggestion into is kind of it's like a place where the flow of normal life, the events of normal life, kind of doesn't exist or it stops. It's like you're mentally 
reaching um, a different place than the normal and it's kind of like a, a neutral place where it's kind of still this is how I would put it and you're going to kind of approach it you're approaching it with a sort of it rather than a sort of desire or a longing, a longing like a, an emotion you're approaching it with kind of a it's kind of like a curiosity it's kind of like I'm going to test what's going to happen and I just want to see, I'm, I'm just curious to see you know whether I might be shown what can I be shown in this life what can the universe show to me um, and you're kind of having that curious kind of open minded perspective and you're just going to sort of reach you're going to sort of tune into this kind of like a frequency you're going to tune you kind of getting into this like communication band and you're going to try and basically connect with your higher self the the you that's like not your mind but the thing that's always present that's kind of like there in the background like overseeing your mind um, you're going to connect to that and you're going to connect to your awareness of what this world really is uh, whatever that means to you and then you're just going to sort of briefly um, think about you know imagine or think about the thing that you um, want to experience and just imagine it with some kind of like enthusiasm or emotion towards that thing um, and you're going to try and connect to something in a way you're trying to sort of connect with the universe at the same time I guess um, and it's just going to be this sort of moment of meditation almost um, where you disconnect yourself from the normal your normal thoughts and all, all the busyness or whatever emotions or stress or whatever would normally you know worrying about something or planning about something you're going to disconnect from all of that and you're just going to tap into this thing for this moment block everything out right block everything else out and insert this idea okay when that's done you want to try and forget about it and then but remain in a sort of calm state for a while you want to just try and you know let it take effect but you want to try and completely forget about what you what you did you, you're not going to keep thinking about it and thinking like oh when's it going to happen when's it going to happen you, you've just put out what you've put is a suggestion to what may happen and then you're just going to go about your business as usual and if you're lucky you may find that it, something interesting will happen right but you're not kind of you're not desperate for it to happen and it's not a big deal whether it happens or not right and um, you're just going to believe it's possible you're not going to believe that it's going to happen necessarily you're not and you're not going to be disappointed if it doesn't happen and it's not going to if it doesn't happen it's not going to affect your beliefs either way right it's not going to affect your feelings your perspective about anything okay you hear those shots in the distance those are um, obviously shotguns you see these things here 
these are the um, shotgun plate things that they shoot I think that's what they shoot so they've been been shooting here that one's been broken interesting never noticed that before that's my first time sort of seeing that actually <clears throat> There's no one actually working on the railway at the moment, but they did used to. This whole big river thing they've made didn't used to exist. So there was a stream. They've di basically diverted it through this channel. I'm going to head on that way. Now, this what sort of things should you pick to as your example? as your suggestions for this manifestation technique um, I would say pick something simple that is that is possible to happen possible but unlikely okay um, you want something like uncommon okay um, one of the first ones I did was I thought well, I haven't seen a wild boar for ages. Like, very rarely see them. So it's possible to see one, but it's not likely. It's very unlikely. So that was what I tried. And yes, I did see one, perhaps less than a week later, but I didn't actually see it in real life. What I saw was a photograph of it on a website. So I was looking at a website that was about um, this AI art, AI picture generation, and they had a wild boar a pic on the. You know, it was an article, and it had a picture of a wild boar in in a forest, and um, you know, AI generated picture. Um, so, how do you talks about? You can move mountains, but the mountains have to agree that they should be moved so your your desire or your what you want to manifest has to be in has to sort of be um, compatible with what the the world wants or the universe wants to happen so I guess the universe wanted to show people these AI pictures so it didn't have a problem showing me this AI picture of this animal that's otherwise very rare in this part of the country nowadays um, and yeah the, the chances of seeing a wild boar on the internet a picture of one is very is fairly uncommon you're not going to see one every week to be honest They really don't want people to go and be alone in the countryside, do they? Uh, even this place um, at the far end, it says um, there's like a little sign now. I don't know if it's new, but it says like footpath only, no bikes. I know uh, I've been coming, been coming through here um, for years on my bike, to be honest. It's just a grassy uh, trail, grassy field across there you go through and then grassy, but you, there is a section of that dirt track you have to go through at the end, but I get why they don't want people going down that, I know they don't want people going on that particular part of the dirt track, but um, yeah, there's a lot of pheasants here, there's a big country estate where they have loads of thousands of pheasants interesting place oh, I just like this little stream it reminds me of like you know Robin Hood living in the woods or something hundreds of years ago so um, another example of the, the uh, of the manifestation that you can do 
um, an idea I had um, this morning as I was waking up is um, you could do um, you would, could say I would like to remember something from my past that I've completely forgotten about so it could be 10 years ago it could be 20 years ago you know it, uh, distant past probably something that you would be very unlikely to remember that you've completely forgotten about and if you were just sat alone with no nothing to you know if you were alone you would never remember it <laughs> like even if you had all enough you know plenty of time a long time alone thinking about things trying to remember your past you would never remember it that sort it's that sort of thing it kind of requires like an external thing to jog, jog your memory and then you're like oh i remember that like you just about remember it when you're like shown something that um brings the memory out draws draws it out because my memory of the past is actually not very good like <laughs> the distant past is not very good but if you showed me like a picture of a place that I went to like a long time ago I might actually like then remember it even if I don't actually like actively remember it at the moment you know I'm get uh, I'm guessing it's the same for a lot of people but it could just be because of my chronic fatigue syndrome problems that my memory is worse than it should be. Check out these birds here. They're not pheasants. Almost like little emus or something. I think they might be grouse. I'm not sure where this goes. I've never been down here before. I'll have a little bit of a look. There's a hare running through there. It's a big, big animal much bigger than a rabbit, it's like double the size. He stopped from now. It's a very natureful area. Yeah, I've not popped down to this bit before. I'm not sure if you're supposed to go down here or not, if it's a bride away or what. It's not really marked. Usually check the map. Usually I'll check the check the online maps before they don't show, they don't always show them on like Google Earth unless it's like a farm track you have to check a special map noticing way more runners in the countryside on the country roads than there ever used to be and these don't look like country people, they look like urban people um, there's a lot from my town that um, run around the park the weekend a lot now it's like they have like organized events um tractor or something's come through here recently uh, there's a tractor um tilling the soil behind me i'm trying to think where he came from maybe he's just done that field but probably maybe he came from up there i don't think he'd fit around there would it i don't know kind of got to be careful when you're in the countryside Got big machines and things, um, but yeah. So uh, another question I suppose people might have is like, can you do more than one manifestation at the same time? Can you do one, then do another one, then wait for them to happen? And does it like make them less effective or less likely to happen? And the answer is I'm not really sure <laughs> but I suspect you can do more than one and um, it doesn't really make them any more or less or lo more likely to happen I'd say don't do too many though and leave like a space of maybe at least 20 minutes, half an hour in between doing more than one
um, I'll, I'll talk about the, the ones that I did um, so I remember doing one this was pretty funny I, um, I, I asked I wanted to see a girl that looks has a specific hairstyle um, I want to see a girl with um, red hair with a specific hairstyle called uh, twin twin tails like um, Asuka from Neon Genesis Evangelion right and what I ended up seeing was there's another one down there this one wasn't actually coming down the track he was just coming he was just coming through the field but there's another one there like spraying something I think I'm hoping he's still in the field well, it might not be but um yeah this is like a hairstyle that you would never uh, usually see um, like European people wouldn't like very rarely ever have it like you're very very unlikely to see it um, and where a few days later to a week later I did end up seeing it but um, I saw it on like my my best friend from like secondary school um, his mum is he's Asian right and his mum had the that hair she doesn't usually but his mum had that hairstyle and so his mum's probably like 50 or 60 or something <laughs> so <laughs> I wanted to see like obviously like a young person <laughs> with red hair with red with red hair and that's hairstyle but what I actually saw was an older woman with black hair and that hairstyle right <laughs> and like I said this is like a hair you this is like a hairstyle you'd never usually see like never ever because it's kind of like an Asian thing but also like it's like an anime thing okay another one I another one I did was um I said um uh, well, not said. You don't have to speak it out. I, uh, I thought um, I want to see a girl that looks like Hermione from the Harry Potter films, and um, I did see. I did end up seeing one, like not long afterwards. Um, down, she was like a university student or something. Down, down at the bridge, like near the un main main university buildings. Um, near the near the railway. Um, another one. Another one I did. Um, I said um, I want to meet a girl that um, is interested in conspiracy theories. Um, and I. This one took a while to happen. This took maybe a month to happen. Um, but someone basically suggested to me that I watch this YouTuber, this like live streamer who was interested in Toho, right? And so I looked her up, and um, she was. I I found that she played a game called uh, Deus Ex okay um, so she's like a die-hard Christian girl from America and yeah she play, played this game Deus Ex and she was like doing all the memes and stuff so that one kind of yeah I'd say that worked but I didn't actually meet her but I did speak to her directly you know because it's like a very small She's like a virtual YouTuber, but it's like a very small channel, so she will speak to you 
directly. Um, so yeah, I did. I did quite a few. I can't remember all of them. Um, near the main road now, big road from like Buckingham Tindurick bypass goes to Bicester, which is like a large town that's rapidly growing unfortunately not sure what these flowers are or what they're used for but they're a bit like clovers but they've actually got a smell to them like quite a nice smell actually because there's so many of them they've actually got a smell they do look they look like large clovers I don't know why they're growing them for Maybe it's because they are, oh, it could be because they nitrogenate the soil, something like that, regenerate the soil. Yeah, they do smell a bit like a rose. Uh, I want to go to Chilton Hills, but it's, it's pretty far away and I've been not so good since, since I did that 85 miles. It wasn't just that, it was just overdoing it for weeks and weeks without resting properly so the one that st really stands out to me um, was um, I was coming back from a cycling trip over there somewhere like five miles that way and um, coming down this country road past this barn near where this farm shop is it's a very quiet road but it's a crossroads and it takes me across to the Hillsden like a very narrow road it was sort of a, an evening in the summer and it was like an hour until there's like an hour there's light left until it got dark and um, as I'm like slowly rolling towards this main road this crossroads um, I stop to look to the right hand side to see if there's any cars coming at like 50 miles per hour and I see this girl on a bike is like um, rolling towards me like she kind of rolls towards me at the same time as I roll towards um, the edge of the road and we like stop at the same time and <laughs> she's kind of like a bit I don't know she's a bit like lost and she's a bit like looking for directions kind of I get the sense and um, she's on like an old vintage uh, bike she's kind of like a bit like fashionable she's probably spent time in like urban places maybe um, maybe works in a bar or something like that. and um, I think she had like a nose piercing or something but um, she wasn't like unattractive looking she was she was okay she she didn't look like a kind of crazy liberal type um, and from her accent I could tell she was like from Eastern Europe or something I have no idea where she was like staying um but um yeah i just like briefly gave her directions um one sec this helicopter i, I i've always liked this field here with this road that goes through these two open fields um now the crazy part about this story is that um, I never saw the girl again by the way um, the crazy part about the story is that earlier that day I'd been watching a video by a guy called Charge Ride Repeat it's like an older guy from the UK and he goes to a lot of like touristy places and kind of like very remote places and stuff he seems to be like I'd say he's like an expert mountain biker and um, he was 
riding with his wife in the video sometimes he does and um you know he takes his wife around to these holiday places and he goes on bike whatever so i was thinking i saw that and i was thinking i obviously had like a strong emotional response and it set my like romantic imagination off i'm thinking that would be cool actually that's something i've never thought about really like riding with a, a girl right but I'm 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 thinking of like an anime girl, obviously, <laughs> not a real girl, but st still, that's what makes it crazy, right? So I watched that video. I have that um, thought, and then um, I forget about it, and that's the important part of it. You got to forget about it, um, and. Um, then later that day that happens but because i just thought oh it's a random thing i didn't like capitalize on it i just thought it was some random event i didn't realize the significance of it i didn't like put the two and two together until like just afterwards you know i'm a bit slow thinking about it <laughs> but maybe i should have like said like uh, like right after I was thinking like maybe I should have said oh do you want to like go to together or something like I don't know like oh I can show you the way do you know what I mean is that what I was supposed to do and I fucked it up like do you get what I mean um yeah it's weird um so that would be like what I would call like an accidental manifestation because I didn't intend to, ma I wasn't intending to manifest, I was just like genuinely uh, reacting to a video and like thinking about what I was seeing. Um. But the number one factor that we always have in common so far, this is an axiom that's never been broken from my um, perspective is the incredible degree of imagination that we all have. Now, if you see through the world and you see all the fake mall events and school events and you see not Nilk and you might you email me and say, Matt, I ain't got no imagination. Some uncle of mine could have bought me $100 worth of Star Wars action figures and they would have just sit there in front of me. I would have known what to do with them. I wouldn't have put them in little situations and acted little things out. I can't imagine shit, Matt, but I can see through the world just like you can. Guys, I don't think that'll ever happen. My imaginative thing when I was a kid, what grade would have been? Sixth grade, seventh, eighth, ninth or so was Dungeons and dragons it wasn't cool i guess when you got later on in high school i stopped doing it and then for many years there's nobody to play with i had to play with my well that didn't that was going to come out I had to play with myself but not to cheat up the character no i hear just to create the scenarios and what would be in the next module and imagining what the dungeon would be like and the castle and all the complexity of the imaginative, if that's a word, situation. It wasn't to cheat the character up. And no, certain Christians yelling at me, that's, is that what happened to you, Matt? That's satanic shit. You were, you casted spells or <laughs> you were, you were, did you have a, a wizard and a saucer? Yeah, I had a wizard and a saucer. So what? Come on, sir. And it was called a magic user, kind of a dumb name looking back now. And then I guess you would advance in levels. You'd become a mage or a saucer or whatever. But it was just in general magic user. We were so, I don't know, introduced to the game at such a young age. It just seemed like a normal term. Now it seems kind of stupid. But, it, oh, yeah, that just dooms your soul uh, pretending you have a little character in a game and what's the first level spells magic missile. <laughs> Come on, man. Come on. Christian's afraid of some some are of, of Dungeons and Dragons and games like that. Come on, man. It creates the imagine. Yeah, the not the not the not, the not, the not Nilk doesn't like it because it fosters imagination, which is a necessary mental skill in some way to be able to see through this fake world. You hand a two-year-old or a three-year-old today a phone when you're at dinner at a restaurant just to shut the little cretin up. That does not foster imagination. That does the thinking, or should I say brainwashing, for 
the little cretin what just staring at the phone mesmerized during dinner that if you gave a young kid today a piece of paper and a pencil just say this is what you're going to do all afternoon they wouldn't know what to do they'd go insane they wouldn't know to they could sketch out things and create little scenarios you literally could drive most young children today insane if you said for one day all you got is this paper and pencil Let's look at this for a few minutes and see if we can essentially take some sort of truth drop that needs to be artificially carried through reality through to us when maybe no person never went to no woods. Maybe it's all made up. So let's see. You're only going to spend a few minutes on this, Matt, if this is a truth drop that's carried artificially through time in order to give us a spiritual message. Yeah, we're used to this sort of shit. We don't have to spend more than, more than a few minutes on it. These spiritual truth drops are old hat to us now. Or what does it say again? I went to the woods because I wished to live deliberately, to front only the essential facts of life and see if I could not learn what it had to teach and not, when I came to die, discover that I had not lived. Okay, went to the woods, went away from society, from civilization, from whatever not milk that existed in its infancy form, to live deliberately, intentionally, and with consciousness, we discovered from the definition, to front only the essential facts of life which implies one must get away from society to get your shit in order. That's the way I interpret it, David. You cannot have your shit in order if you are in the middle of life's complexity. I said years ago, one thing other than incredible imagination that we all have in common, we here in this little robo to escape the ship of fools, the fact that at some point many of us say, I was not in the woods but quiet or I was laid off. And in that three or five months of quiet, I discovered things about the world that I never was able to see when I was in the middle of the rat race. This going off in quiet time where people sold their business or whatever it is, that is something many of us, I can't say all of us, have in common. So this quiet time or a time in our life where we were isolated or we could go by ourselves, even if it's just for a few weeks, we do share that. But the number one factor that we always have in common so far, this is an axiom that's never been broken from my uh, perspective, is the ima incredible degree of imagination. I would um, I would definitely remember seeing this if it was here before and I would have tried to read it and see what it said because I can't quite make out what this says use for possibly hunting I'm not sure H that looks like a D H uh, could be a U there Maybe there's an N there, hunt in the riding, the riding, I can't, it looks like, lo, it looks like it says lol, like L-O-L, -L. the ride, useful hunting, the riding, something out to Silverstone. Some of it you can read easily, some of it you can't. It looks like this part has been inlaid into this outer part rather than carved. But that was done around the same time that the bench was made. Obviously I can't tell what wood it's made of, but it looks like it's very, very old. It survived for a long time. Um, I mean... Surely that's got to be at least 20 years old. Probably 50 years old, 40, 50 years old maybe. I uh, don't know. It depends what wood it's made of, how it's treated, things like that. This part here looks new though. Um, I guess you could argue that they transplanted this here recently, but I don't believe that anyone would go to the effort to transplant a bench here that's in this poor quality. There's another one over there as well. I reckon this was put on recently as a kind of like bureaucratic um, system to record the benches and condition or something. 
uh, and there's another one over there but I think this one's more interesting because it's got the inscription I'm not sure if the other one is inscribed but um, this wasn't here I don't know 20 years ago I don't 